All right, so look, with 2023, you know, coming to a close, coming to an end, I have something to confess. I've never liked using these values. You know why? I've never liked using these values because you could just have an attribute that does the same thing. You could just use attributes. It's crazy, right? But this tutorial, this video is going to be showing you about something you actually might have never really seen before, and it's called an object value. Now, this, this thing is actually pretty cool, right? So object value, you don't have to have Studio open for this. Like you can if you want, but this can just be like one of those videos you watch as you're like eating lunch on your McDonald's 30 minute break, right? Up to you. Um, so, okay, let's actually make one. So I'm going to insert an object value inside the workspace and I'll just name it object value. Why not? Object value, there we go. So just like other values, right? Let's let's say, I think the most common one is an int value, right? Int values have the values of integers or numbers, right? So you can put 10, you can make it 100. And then like in a script, you could be like, oh, you know, workspace dot value dot value. Uh, and, and then you see like what it's equal to. And then you can use something with that. What an object value holds is like a, an object, right? So I'm pretty sure it can hold players, right? Or it can hold the base plate, or it can hold the spawn location, right? So here's, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to add a part, right? Um, yeah, like, like so. I'll just drag it over here. And then inside the object value, I'm going to set the value to be this part, just like that. So right now, our object value's value is this part. Um, but then how do we actually use that? You know, what can we do? Well, obviously, probably might should make a script, right? Like a server script, which you know, takes this value and does something with it. Um, so what I'm thinking of doing is we could do a thing where while, and then we'll just task.wait. People haven't kept, keep telling me to use task.wait instead of wait. I don't know the big difference, but to appeal to the masses, the matrix, if you will, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna use task.wait. Um, so let's do this every one second. What we're gonna do is we're going to take the value of the object value being the part we're going to clone it and then we're going to uh, like place it inside the workspace and we're going to position it above the spawn look the, the spawn location right so I'll say local part is equal to uh, workspace wait for child object value dot value and then we're going to clone that right so whatever the value of this object value is which is the part we are going to clone so we have you know one more um, then what I'm going to do is I'll say, okay, part dot parent is equal to workspace. So, you know, it's inside the workspace so we can actually see it. And then part dot position is equal to workspace dot spawn location dot position. And then we're just going to uh, plus that vector three dot new zero 20 zero. I'm basically saying here is okay. The position of the spawn location, and then we're just positioned at 20 studs higher than the spawn location. Right. And so if I were to, you know, play the game right now, run that back there we go the game is so the script right now it's checking okay what is the object value right then it's saying okay we you know take that part we place it inside of the workspace and then we set its position to be this right now here's another fun thing if i were to delete this part right now so it's gone right so the object value still has the part but but like it's gone now right is that going to work so you know if i if i if i run that back right now Interesting. As you can see, it says attempt to index nil with clone. So that actually isn't going to work, right? So an object value still needs like a connection to the part. Because let's say if I say, okay, object value dot value is equal to this part. And then I delete the part, even though it's still going to show like as if we have the part, it's not going to work, right? However, 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 if inside a script, I were to delete the part and then try doing this, Let's see what happens. Workspace, wait for child part, destroy. So if I if I destroy the part in the inside the script, it still works. So if I go on, on the server, as you can see, okay, well, it's adding parts to, to the workspace, but we don't actually have our original part, right? Like if I zoom out, yeah, like it's nowhere to be found because we destroyed it, right? However, because the object value, like it, it, this is weird. Like I'm not too sure why destroying it in a script still makes it work. But then like destroying it, you know, like in the studio, then makes it not work, right? So I find that a little bit weird. But 
yeah, like that's basically the power of an object value, right? So it needs to be connected to a part um, or it needs to, it needs to have like a part connected to it. Right. And then like inside a script, then, you know, you can do whatever you want with the original part. doesn't matter. Um, the object value will always have, you know, this part's value. You could also do something like, um, you know, workspace, wait for child, object value. You can change the value. You can set the value to be workspace dot spawn location, right? So I can do that <laughs> and, and, you, and you know what's going to happen? Yep, there we go. So you can't see it right now, but it keeps on generating new spawn locations like so. That's pretty cool. Another fun thing also, I it might, I actually really want to want to see something. Can it generate me? What happens? Okay, it's giving me an error. Attempt to index nil with parent. That's pretty interesting. Okay, so you cannot set the value to be like characters, right? So that that's not allowed. But yeah, you know, I can I can set it to be like like the part and everything. So that that's all fine. So again, if we if we if we try that right now, um, yeah, there we go. Beautiful. Now the good thing about using object values, right, is that when now when I modify this part, you know, if I make it like maybe if I make it tiny, okay, I'll make it very small. And what I'll actually do is I'll make a folder uh, where we're gonna place all of our like auto generated parts, right? I'll just call it generated parts. And then inside the script, now instead of placing it in the workspace, we're going to place it inside the generated parts folder, just so like the workspace doesn't get too clogged up, right? And then if I set the task.spawn, task.weight to be 0.1 now, then we're going to have this like little tiny cube, which, yeah, there we go. So we're going to have something like that. That is very cool. Because now what we can do with this, we can literally just like set this to be anything we want. We can, you know, have this, this, this tiny like, like, tic-tac almost you know tiny little shape and that's still gonna work now that's basically i guess all there is for you to know about object values um i guess the one thing again the reason why we're using object values and not like an att attribute for example which if you don't know what an attribute is i have a video so please i need views like right now so please please check that out but yeah you cannot set objects uh in attributes right so yeah we have you know strings numbers booleans vectors number range, rectangle font, but you cannot actually assign objects into an attribute, right? So this is like the only place you can st like store um, an object, right? Or an, or an instance, right? Whatever, whatever they're called. I do want to have some fun with this though, right? Because it, it, like you can do a lot of things with this. Like, let's say I clone this, right? And right before placing it, you know, inside the generated parts, I could just say, okay, part.color. And then we can just make it equal to like a random color. So I'll say, color three dot from RGB. And then this will return a color three from the range of zero to uh, 255. So we need three numbers that are either zero uh, or 255 or anything in between, right? So we can just say math dot random zero 255. So this will give us a random number between zero and 255. And then I'll just take this because it needs one for red, green, and blue. And then I can just copy this like so. So now this will just give us a random color every single time for every single part. There we go, like so. Now we have these like little... <laughs> oh, that is amazing. How cool is that? Yeah, there we go. It's spawning them so fast that I'm... I'm standing on them. Like all of them are falling, technically. But because they're here like so fast, I'm just here like that. That is so cool. One thing you could also do is you could just say, oh yeah, you know, like, then we, we, we can destroy the part. So, if, you know, task dot weight 0.1 and then part destroy. You know, that's, some, that's something you, you could also do. Again, I'm just showing you this just as an example, right? Let's see. Oh, okay, so it's it's destroying them a little too fast. Okay, that, that might be an issue. That still looks kind of cool though, you know? I'm not gonna lie. But yeah, those are object values. Um, very cool. Um, if you found this video helpful, give me your sensitive personal information uh and by that i mean your email i have a thing in the comments where like you can sign up to my newsletter if you have uh, amazing i love you if, if you haven't i love you too but i'd love you even more if you were to give me your email <laughs> um and yeah so thank you for watching